Easy E, how are we? Sean E, I'm a little bit fragile. I had a very good Paddy's week. <laughs> a good Paddy's weekend, you know, a good Paddy's Irish weekend. You weren't even in the country. No, I brought my <laughs> revenue elsewhere. Absolutely. Here, I, if the ministers can go to New York and Washington, I can go to Poland. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I can't argue that. That's yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes that, that makes perfect sense. So you're away in Poland for weekend. Few beers, had a good time, and uh, did you have the whole challenge about this this um, non hilly cork Martin in the background, back of your head, or did you have the whole Iron Man in the back of your head being like, I need to get on this real quick? Or what's the story? Yeah, yeah, I had it in my head that it was coming, so I made sure to eat and drink absolutely everything. <laughs> so this 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 the last big blowout weekend is what is what you're pretty much saying. Yeah, um, well, time like- to think. I know, I know we're a running podcast, but if people want to get away for a weekend, go to Wroclaw in Poland. Six of us went over a dinner one night, and I mean, beautiful stuff. Right. In the main, like, the hub of the city. And we got two drinks and a big dinner each, and it was 120 euros. My God. For six people. 20 quid so each like, meal. I think I would have spent that in the Camden uh, if I was watching rugby <laughs> here. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's... So anyway, we... I. The only bit I thought about was today after I ate my last burger in Poland. Uh, right. I was like, oh man, I need to get running. So this this is coming at a very good time <laughs> for me. But yeah, no, it was a good weekend. It was a good weekend. Ireland had a good result as well. So um, I felt by watching that, I was doing sport as well myself. Right. Uh, so yeah, no, it was good again. A little bit nervous to be getting back into it tomorrow. The the two to three day hangover is definitely definitely sticking with me but it's um yeah tomorrow being day one sean day one day here quick question on that by the way because what I, i'm starting look i i never tell someone to give up alcohol or anything like that but but over this weekend and stuff with parties and all the rest like i i started properly getting the fear of, of going out and having mad wool because it does take me because i'm i'm doing my own training stuff in towards my own events going on pretty soon i'm like if i go on a big mad one I feel that two, three day hangover and I cannot catch up with myself. I, I, I do be in an awful way. Do you feel all set and good to go for them for tomorrow after the weekend you've had? Because I know myself, if I went two days, three, two, three days drinking with the prices you're telling me over there, I, I don't think I'd make one day. So are you conscious of, of that over the next couple of weeks towards your Cork Marathon? Um, I know we, we always say like have a bit here and there and all the rest and not judging, but hangovers. So- what I uh, hangovers? <laughs> no, they're not good. Like, <laughs> listen, my mom listens to this, ma'am. I was out until about seven in the morning there on Paddy's. Ah, Day. hell, hell, I couldn't, and I couldn't even get back with, in my new college days. We were very Irish. We started with mimosas for breakfast and then we went to the zoo to wander around and look at animals for a little while. And then we went for dinner and drinks and cocktails and more drinks. And then before I knew it, I was leaving a nightclub. Uh, I don't, I think it was uh, I think it was five o'clock, ish. Oh, so that's not that's not bad at all compared to seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, no, it was five o'clock. Now, I was the first to leave the night. <laughs> 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 I, I think it was only in the warm up set for the DJ, but I was like, oh no, I'm gone. So that was that was so that's that's the level I went to. And the next day, I, we went paintball in the next morning, and I was like, oh no, I'm like. Wow. The, I listen, I don't I think I was still drunk until someone <laughs> shot me from close range six times and that took that took the hangover. The off. adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, that well he nearly lost his life. <laughs> as well, but, um but yeah, no, it was it was a really good again. I suppose the challenge is a challenge, but it's a lifestyle. And this is one thing I kind of want to get across to Sean. Have I talked about the hangovers and drinks and stuff over the next 75 days? Yes, absolutely. I am giving myself four occasions. And I think that's realistic for anyone who's trying to do anything like a marathon or anything. And that's over the next 75 days. So part of my rules for me, uh, one of them is by four occasions. That right. doesn't mean I have to use them. That just means there are four nights where the food will still be good choices, though. This is the difference. It's not okay. a case of today is my day off. It's a big blowout. It's I'm with the guys. It's a wedding on the weekend. You know, I'm at that stage of life. We have to be realistic. These events yeah. are coming. like So... There are four occasions and um, I have six events. So I have to be disciplined at two of them. 
but I've chosen, I have been selective on the ones that I can be like, you know what, that's, that's with the guys, that's one for me, or, right. you know, that, you know, so, yeah, I can have four occasions, and I think we have so many events, we have so many social engagements, and, and it's not that peer pressure, it's not that I needed or wanted, I, I would just like the choice, and I could mm-hmm. arrive to some of these things, and go, no, do you know what, not today. Okay. And it could be a case of just going for a simple beer on a Sunday with you on one day, you know, like, so um, it's just it's just something I think people need to be realistic with. You can't, motivation only lasts so long, but routine mm-hmm. and habits last a hell of a lot longer. And if you can be realistic with a plan, which I am, 75 days, you know, it's a very start to finish thing. And then it's, okay, now we've gone into the, the, the Ironman phase of it, but it's... Um, it's realistic and what's coming up in, in, in life and stuff. So four occasions where I can allow myself still have to be clean with the food. Um, but I can allow myself a couple of beers. Just for context for people listening, because you're sounding very fresh. We are recording this late on a Sunday evening and you are literally just back in the apartment after that weekend you've explained. And, and you're talking about this 75 day challenge. I don't know how you're doing it. We're going to find out though, right after we hit the intro music for this week's episode of the Any Given Run Day podcast. Let's go. Okay, so big man, you hit it now on the head there. You're, you're going for a 75 day challenge. You, you, you talked about this challenge thing last week. Was it while talking about it, it kind of clicked that you want to do this? Or like, where did this, was the inspiration from this 75 day challenge you saw on TikTok? Is it the exact same? It's different? What, what's going on? I seen the TikTok and uh, like everything, Sean, I took personal offense um, to people <laughs> who are undertaking this challenge. Um, and like you said, challenge is a challenge, but through all the fad diets I've done, through all the fad workout regimes, this 30 days to get a six pack stuff, you know, like a, a, it's kind of reaffirming that bollocks. <laughs> sorry for the language. <laughs> Your mother's listening. <laughs> sorry, man. But it is, it, you know, there's no quick fix. Mm-hmm. Do you know, like when you look at anything, people who want to lose weight and stuff, and they go, okay, I'm going to eat 1200 calories a day and then I'm going to lose weight. Like your liver holds mostly like the water and glucose. So in the first week, you're going to lose about four kilos and you're going to feel great about yourself. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as you stop, everything comes back. So the idea behind my version of the challenge is like people can say, yes, this is softer. No, <laughs> I'm not telling people to do it this is a me thing i seen the gimmick i was like 75 days well turns out i've 76 days until i run the marathon so i will rob that Mm -hmm. and then i'm just going to do something realistic so so some of it is discipline some of it is a good kick up the arse for me because since the hair transplant and stuff i hadn't really been training did a bit of skiing and that was the most exercise i've done since the middle of january when i stopped um and it's a, it's time now and it's it's given me this and now that we're talking about it i, I have to do it um <laughs> because and that's motivation sometimes in itself is letting people know that you're doing it but then don't be all talk be all action then after that you know so um it just so happens there's 75 days until the day before the Dublin marathon um so the day oh yeah so the, the friday night traveling down I'm, I'm done essentially and then i all i all i have to do is run the marathon um so that that's the idea behind it. It wasn't any logical science. I just have a limited time. But where I have to be disciplined now is my food choices. I can't be lazy. So I have to have motivation for about two weeks because even I noticed trying to get back into things, I was like, ah, look, we'll just I'll just put the pizza in the oven because I haven't got the time and all this. So there has to be a little bit of planning. There has to be discipline. Um, and we can go through it in different segments. Let's go training so we don't go on tangents so okay Shoot. training initially i'm waiting for you to give me a masterful masterful gym plan and that will consist of how many days sean or how many workouts uh just three and if you i'll let you talk what i'm gonna have to do here yeah so basically uh, this is kind of going similar to what i do at the moment um i don't i'm at the moment at four because you are you like you said that you haven't done too much in a while except skiing so jumping you into a four or five day training plan gym training plan to me makes no sense because um you have the you, you're building towards a marathon you're also you're swimming you're thinking about swimming you're thinking about cycling and everything else so all you need is two to three days like three is probably excessive and um, you probably get away with either one one or two full bodies or if you want to get into the gym three times because it is a challenge the way I've done it at the moment for you is two uppers and one lower, and um, but the short, the thirty-minute workouts, 
the first two, three weeks is just your basic um basic ex- exercise, no, no, no mad fluff. There's one or two little challenge things in it just because just because for yourself, like oh reason to come back. Like um there's one time thing at the end, like a finisher type thing where you have to do X amount of four exercises um using two kettlebells i go to in a second but then apart from that it's just your basic split squats that you need for running and uh, be great transfer over that just some more posterior work a lot of back work as well and uh, one or two things that you like you really like doing core exercises so it's doing some flutter kicks and some butterfly sit-ups not that you need to do sit-ups or coring like that especially with the exercise you're doing a lot of goblet squats before we do barbell stuff because you haven't touched a barbell in quite a while so no, it's no just yeah, there's no point in going, okay, Eric, let's go barbell back squats, you know, five by five and go max strength because you need max strength. It's like, hey, let's build up to it. Let's get those split squats in at first. Just build up to that single leg strength and uh, because that's going to help a lot quicker with the running. The same time, we don't want to crush it because if it crush you during these three, three workouts, we do an hour or so, guess what? You're not going to be able to do anything else. You're not going to want to go for that run afterwards. So when you leave the gym after 40 odd minutes of doing this, you should feel good rather than feel wrecked. And that's the, I, I was only talking to someone recently about this. I think I brought it up in the podcast because, because I heard about it that day before recording it. They're like, their friend went to a PT and the PT pretty much rubbed his hands. Like, Oh, you haven't been in the gym since before COVID. Oh, I got you. And he uh, crushed the person. The person couldn't move for six days afterwards. And the PT felt great about it. I'm like, that person's not coming back. You lost there and that one because why you crushed and felt good, like anyone can crush it. I can give you an exercise right now. We'll go Bulgarian split squats. Let's go 20 each leg. Let's go five sets. Before anything else, that's going to crush your legs. And there's absolutely no point in it. But some people out there think, right, they can't walk after one of my sessions and have the ego with it. And it drives me up the wall. So basically... Full body exercises, we're going to hit front of your legs, back of your legs, chest, back, shoulders. And because we're two two guys who like to have the odd beer on a Sunday, definitely arms thrown in there as well. Just because you have to do it. <laughs> as runners, you have to do bicep. Oh, they're, 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 I, I have you doing 100 bicep curls on one of the days. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. But let's say you crush yourself doing bicep <clears throat> curls. That's not going to stop you from running. So the finisher's kind of like that. It's not going to stop you from there. Even the full body finisher on the other day. Um, I think it's it's two light kettlebells. I, I think I have you doing front squats into squat thrusters, uh, which is full squat, punch to ceiling, uh, reverse lunges, and then it is um, bent over rows to so get the quads a bit of a break. And you do 12 reps of each of them, and then you do 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So it gets easier, but obviously your arms get tired. But you're talking about, you know, eight kilo kettlebells. And because you're in that front rack position for all of them, except bent over row, you're working your core as well. So, but it's that nice little challenge. Go, okay, I've got six rounds to finish this. It gets easier each round. Let's try and get through this three, four minutes, set a time on it, and then something to beat. So having those little goals, because you've obviously got the big goal of doing the cork marathon. You might have a time on it, who knows? Um, but you have those little gym goals, and it's true as well. And there's different things with push-ups and stuff in there as well. But nothing, nothing too fancy or anything like that. It's just your typical full body workout. And people might be wondering, like, where where he's going with this? This is the official live Sean telling me what I have to do. I've <laughs> been on, on the beer all weekend, so I just kind of saved time by getting out of the way during the podcast. But so training, yeah. <laughs> You have, you have all heard what's expected from Coach Sean of me for the next 75 days. Mm. There will probably be some changes in that. But in terms of training, the idea is two times mm. per day. Sean's two times per work, day? Yeah. <clears throat> so, oh. But here is the realism, okay? Because the 75 right. hard challenges, you're supposed to do 45 minutes of exercise per day. All right? I am right. doing two training sessions and this is where people need to add in realism on the training list will include running Mm -hmm. swimming gym yoga walking (laughs) yeah okay the minimums i have because i want it to be purposeful exercise it has to be for 30 minutes at a minimum my runs are going to be longer my swims are going to be longer and cycles are going to be longer. The gym is going to be 40 minutes. And where it becomes important is, if I'm saying I'm doing yoga, 
then I'm doing at least 30 minutes of proper stretching and, and engrossing and, and giving it a good go. If I'm going for a walk, I'm not just walking to the shop. It's I'm getting dressed. I'm going for a purposeful walk. I might listen to an audio book. Use it as 30 minutes of educational time. But there will be times you're not supposed to be running. You're not supposed to do that. And you need to probably move yeah. is the idea or do some purposeful. And, and it's not prescribed because you have to listen to your body. So if I'm feeling really bad after week one, wake up the next day and go gym's not happening okay yoga 30 minutes because now it's about how quickly can you recover and maybe take a second yoga walk day it's not that i'm soft it's unrealistic there's 75 days i need to be injury free every single day to get to this goal and that's where we have the selection so i have three workouts to do from you i have swimming i have cycling of running of yoga of walking i have to do any of those two every single day twice a day between now and uh, the marathon. Does running take precedent though because you've got 75 days to Cork Marathon? Uh, Cork Marathon is a small chink in a long road to an Ironman. So not necessarily, no. There'll be a bit of cycling in there as well um, because I will take pressure off the knees and I'll be training the heart on the bike. Likewise, getting into water, like if I have a heavy run day, get into the pool for 30 minutes that night. I'm not I'm not pounding the pavement all the time. Um, and then trying to balance it. So usually if I'm going on a run, it's quite more intense than the other two. I can probably get longer out of. So I'll probably do gym and morning run in the evening. Um, and then I'll pair cycle with swim. And then I'll have my yoga with walk maybe on a Sunday. You know, I, I, yeah. we'll see how we go. Does that mean then a lot of this stuff... It, it, the- with the running and stuff like are intervals out this side of the cork marathon then uh to get oh, past no, them later no, are intervals are still there's, in there's going to be intervals yes so because... on a day you're doing intervals you're obviously not going to hop in the gym later on that day or it's going to be an no. upper body day maybe or then like yoga no. and stuff then so yeah that's it so if i've had a heavy leg day in the gym intervals are not going to be happening that's the mm. night when i get into the pool that's where i'll get into the pool you're using different muscles, all arms. I'll put putting the pull boy between my legs and just using arms, developing the arms and shoulders as we're working through. You know, like so there's this is why I'm trying to explain to people there's there's no prescribed, it's what is working best with the other and listening to the body. It's the only thing you can do. Everyone is different. Someone might be able to do an arm say that morning, go out and do their intervals that night. You know, so it's it's a case of just managing how the body is feeling. And then adding the appropriate training to keep getting something done every single day. When you initially go, I'm going to train two times per day, 75 days. And um, when you think about it initially, you go, Mike, that's a that's a hell of a lot. Even if you do walks and stuff like that. But then when you break it down, you're actually talking about seven hours a week broken into 30 minute sessions. Like, so well, you could do 30 yep. minutes in the morning doing something and 30 minutes in the evening. And when you like, I, it's remind me of talking well i know we always talk about goggins but it's like his pull-up challenge like four thousand pull-ups you're like that's impossible and he's like well he broke it down straight away to four or five pull-ups per minute and you're like oh okay that's a bit more manageable now and keep going that way so when you break it down like you can go 30 minutes in the morning going for your morning walk and listen to audible whatever it is or, or yoga or a quick gym session and then in the evening you're going for a run and that's that's literally that day done whereas sunday might be a longer run and then you might mix in a bit of yoga and stuff and, and that's that's or a bit of stretching at the end and that's your pretty much your your day done on the sunday if you're going out for like an hour and a half run yeah so that's it so it's it sounds daunting and people are probably mm. going that's that's and this is what i'm saying this is a realistic thing that sounds scary yeah so it will build habits patterns stability consistency it will build everything you need into a foundation because as scary as it might sound, this marathon is the foundation for my summer. Right. So the summer is going to be all triathlon after that. Then we're getting into the Ironman. Then we're going out cycling six, seven hours a day. How am I going to go and cycle for six hours, Sean, if I can't do one hour a day at a minimum? Good question. Do you know, like, <laughs> yeah. how can you get that motivation to go to the gym at six just to get your stretching done for 30 minutes and a little bit of resistance work? If I'm going to have the mental power to come home from a day's work in the long summer's evening, get on the bike and cycle for four hours. So I'm not at the stage where I want to get on a bike and cycle for four hours. So to me, just having the what's it, motivation only lasts so long, but initially just having that, oh, get up and do it. I've said it to everyone, I'm going to do it. Stop being soft. Just get out of bed. Do 30 minutes. Yeah. And once the 30 minutes done, 
I'll feel better about it. Once I get my first week down, I'll feel better about that. Do you know? And, and all of a sudden, the body will start to remember everything. I'll go into the other mode where it's try and limit me to 30 minutes. That's that's where I need to get to. And, um, and any challenge we've done before, Sean, or anything, you, you've kind of seen the transition of me. The first week or two is hell. Mm. After that, then, it's, why aren't you going training, Sean? Why aren't we going? <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's, it, it turns into a different animal. So, as you correctly pointed out, it is seven hours a week, mi- like a minimum. It's a minimum of seven hours a week. If you're having a bad time, all you have to do is seven hours in that week. As long as you do it twice a day purposely. That's right. the only that's hard about it. Twice a day purposely. So it's 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 building in because when you get into Ironman, you can't just be doing the one thing a day. Do you know, like when, okay. you, when trying to cover that kind of volume, and this is sorry, a bit of a background, why two a yeah. days? Because in order to covering that volume, I need to be swimming in the morning, I'm probably cycling in the evening, I need to be probably running on its own with a bit of gym work. So for the rest of the next eight months until the marathon, I have to be nearly doing two a day. So this is a, a lot of a nice way to just get into it because it's it's only 30 minutes. Just go over there and do it. It's on the list from Sean. Don't think about it. Just go. And then if, I'm, if I can't do that, lunchtime, make sure you get out for your run and then maybe get over there in the evening. So I've given myself three opportunities in the day, but I want to get the morning done because what what is really difficult is getting out of bed. But what you realize after a week or two is the mornings are your own. Nobody rings you. Nobody's looking for you. Nobody's texting you. And that's in my case. I'm no kids. Obviously, if you kids, they are hunting you since five in the morning. And that's a different animal. But mm. for me, in my life and this challenge for uh, uh, about what I can do between the hours of six and eight, that's me. No one's, no one's looking for me. No one cares about me uh, between six and eight. After that, they can do what they want with me. And after seven o'clock in the evening, they can all go away again. So because your lunchtime is is not really yours, you know, and, and work, things can happen. Something comes up. Every, everything's always last minute and everyone's in a hurry. And so you can you can get stuck into it because things need to be done. And um, particularly for me, we could be on a call to Galway and then we get three more calls that day. We never make it back to bed. Not that we tra- we can't train anyway during our 12 hours. So yeah. it's. I have to get used to getting up in the morning and I have to get used to just training in the evening. So that's that's what I'm trying to limit myself to. So that's that's training, Sean, in, in a nutshell. And I'm not going into the nitty gritty of I'm going to be doing an easy run Monday and this and that. It's, it's a minimum of 30 minutes. It involves those five disciplines I've described and using them as tactfully as possible. Like this first week could all be easy runs. I could get right. through the week and go, whoa. I am under pressure, big boy. You put on a few kilos. Yeah, okay. Mm. But come next week then, start getting the body moving, start going, all right, I know what I know what I'm about now. And that's when the heavy intervals start coming in, the the real, the real work starts coming in. Because again, you can't go from do, not doing anything and just go, right, intervals, gym, mm. you know, you have to be tactful about and realistic. And and as you've said, you don't want to crush your your soul in the first two days. You don't want to get to Wednesday and go, I can't move. I'm yeah. too tired, can focus and work. So you have to be tactful in how you take on your first week, start building building the body, letting it work with you as well through the first week. So it's definitely a case of week one, get used to getting up, get used to doing it twice a day, seven hours at a minimum. And come week two then, it's time to stop being soft on myself. The body okay. is starting to move with me again. It usually takes me a week to kind of get back into it. But that's, that's the reality of, of, of what we're going to do. Well, you, the way you started it, this one, you went, okay, first thing, training, which leads me to believe you've got other things in this 75-day challenge. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, so the other stupid one, <laughs> um, it says, be on a diet. And Ooh. then in, in asterisks underneath it, it says, contact a nutritionist if you're going to do this. <laughs> so, okay. Um, like be on a diet is a horrible thing to say to people because what is a diet like there's all sorts of diets out there you have your you call them i don't know what they call them sean like 60 20s where 60 percent of the week you eat this and then you have intermittent fasting and you have all these other things that is just calorie deficits and mm. can be dangerous for people if people actually if people are overweight and they were to eat what they were supposed to eat so say six foot male 80 right. kilos, 2,000 calories, basics, right? There, thereabouts. 
uh, that's probably too little based on on their activity. Agreed. If they were to just eat the two to two and a half thousand calories that their body weight is kind of aimed at, over six months they'll lose that weight. But if they were to do the on Saturday on Fridays I only eat six hundred calories because on Saturday I allow myself four thousand calories. You're teaching your body to. Like your body doesn't know that you're just choosing not to eat. Your body thinks you're being starved. I and mean, then it's like, okay. right, I'm storing everything. We're in a time of famine. This is panic stations. So this is where I don't like that the 75 hard is like be on a diet. Like, you know, be be specific. So I'm going to be specific. Sure. My diet has to be unprocessed with a couple of exceptions that are just difficult and time consuming. So pasta and bread. So but what I will do is I will have as whole grain or as 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 hell, I only really eat whole grain or, or sourdoughs. I don't really go into your, your sliced pans and stuff. So that's what I have to do. So if I want chicken nuggets, I have to make them myself. If I want chips, I have to make them myself. And they'll be done in the oven. You're not trying to deep fry them using any oils. It's olive oils. It's not. So taking the process out of food and I have to make it myself. If I'm going for dinner, you have to make the best choice. So not getting the chips, unfortunately, I have to get the soy of the veg. I have to, you know, like it's like if I'm having a burger, for example, I'll try and get, I'm not, I'm not going to like just burger, no, burger. no bread. No, no. It's like, that's, that's the thing process. The only thing I'll allow myself is bread because let's be honest, I'm training two times a day. So you can't, yeah. you, you have to be realistic about where you're getting your carbs, but the sugars are gone. I didn't make that chocolate. That's gone. You know, like you, I have to control everything else. So when you're trying to control your weight, there's a lot of things that you have to try and look at as well. And you can go into it like in any look, there's you, you control insulin, you know, regulation with the sugars you're getting in. So don't be having insulin spikes, get rid of your sugary, shitty corn, like cereals and stuff like that. You know, like get into the hearty foods that the sugar breaks down over a longer period of time, stop having the spikes, you know, and then take an omega three now because in western like we we'll we can do another episode on this song where you go into the detail of omega-6 okay. and omega-3 and the ratios and how that has an influence on your weight um so basically anything that's been cooked is made here in the house um and like so for example saying no breads but i'm going to make my own protein banana bread or i can make oat bread so i can have them as my fillers during the day um but for the likes of breakfast, I do like my whole grain bread with my eggs. I do make homemade burgers. I'm not going to put them into <laughs> a whole grain breads or, you know, start making my own buns. So there is the couple of exceptions and, and pastas. I'm just not going to be making my own pastas. I'd rather have the bag there, whole grain. And and someone else has done that work for me. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But that's where we draw the line. It, it's those kind of, they add a level of complexity that I'm just convenience as well i'm trying to be realistic with um but yeah the likes of your takeaways and stuff they'll all be made at home there'll be spice bags but it'll be homemade um and you know like everything else is is normal with that you know so that's that's the idea behind it really sean is in terms of food is is to be clean eating right and like i'm i'm telling you now i'm gonna i'm gonna eat 20 chicken nuggets some night as a snack and I'm going to make some spicy sauce out of cream cheese and, and use a vinegar base like uh, Frank's hot sauce or something. And then I have a taco sauce to dip it into, you know, so I'll, I'll post a couple of dishes as, as I go. I'm not going to go into too much details, but the yeah. challenge for me now is if I want it, cook it. Um, and if I'm out for dinner, make the right choices. Get the meat into a veg. Don't get the, like, there's nothing wrong with it. A burger a burger is still mince you know it's 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 what else is in it is is the problem whereas if i'm making them myself at least i know what's in it i know the percentage fat in the mince and fat isn't a bad thing in fact i'll probably eat the fattier of them right. given the amount of training so uh, don't be afraid of fats and food either is it probably another episode so you you've had your burger you gone out for, for a restaurant with yourself and you're you're having a good time you're on the water and you, you finish the burger felt really good and, uh, and the waitress goes uh, or the waiter goes dessert menu sir um and this is where it's difficult i am a okay. big cake man that's why I, i'm asking <laughs> i am a big cake man but um other ways around that for me will be fruits um okay. because 
you have to think of why am I hunting that cake? Do you know, like it's mm-hmm. what is it? The body's like, oh, lots of calories in there for nothing. Um, so for me, taking on board a little bit of fruits, the water itself, like drinking plenty of water, and that's a challenge in itself. There'll be three liters of water a day. Um, so taking on and and when I say water, this is where I'm realistic with people. That can include, so I'm saying three liters of liquid. Right. So if I have a coffee in the morning, I'm not saying drink 10 coffees either. Oh, see, I don't drink tea or coffee. So this is, a, it's a bit different for me, but I'm okay. trying, trying to be realistic for other people. Um, like I drink my wadi. So I'll drink my wadi because I'm getting in the liquids that I need. I also drink milk. I'll drink a pint of milk. There's 500 ml of liquid that's going in. Um, so like, I'm not trying to do the farmers out of that <clears throat> by my 75 day challenge, but it's, um, no, it's, it's being realistic that as long as you're constantly thinking fluids, like a, getting in your green tea, you know, 250 mil per cup, you're, you're, you're slowly taking it over. Then three liters doesn't seem like such a, a challenge as long as you're fluid focused. So having a coffee in the morning is 250 mil, but make sure to chase it with a little bit of water as well. You know, like, in, and once you're kind of fluid focused, eventually after 75 days, you're thinking fluids, thinking fluids, thinking mm-hmm. fluids. Then you can start going, Ah oh, man, we need to be taking on more water. Now we're up to, we're actually drinking the three liters of water a day plus everything else, you know, when we're trying to demand that. And that's the idea behind it. It's just get, for me, just be liquid mm. focused, just be fluid focused, keep thinking. And if someone offers me a tea, I'll actually like, oh, actually, can I get a hot black current or, you know, like something yeah. along those lines where I'm like, this is an opportunity to get 250 mil in, you know, but in and it's easy for me i don't drink tea or coffee the only reason i drink tea is if i can have a packet of biscuits with it um but yeah it's it's just to start getting them thinking about fluids so most of mine will be a large bottle of water with a dash of something in it and away we go i know it's a 75 day challenge and the goal is make 75 days but are you concerned with the lack of flexibility or is there a lack in terms of like you're struggling one day for whatever reason, shit day of work, you barely got the session, you got another session going, uh, it's nearly the end of the week. And 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 that kind of idea of a treat, or normally like you used talk on the on the on the podcast before about Friday night was your night where you had treats and stuff like that. Are are you are you concerned where where are you gonna get that treat from? Because you, you said process and chocolates and all are out, or it's just like I just have to hit this 75 days and and and, and that's the focus. And yeah. by the way, just that short I, I don't mean it is in the grand scheme of teams, it is short term, but in the middle of 75 days, I suppose an extra 30 odd can seem like a long time. There is one caveat that I have to be careful with, and well, sorry, one that I was thinking of considering, and it's it's based on what I can start getting my my calorific intake into. Um, if I start to notice I'm starting to burn too much and we're halfway through, there, there is protein puddings that are in Little and Aldi. Oh, <clears> and I have to say, they are absolutely amazing. Mm. I know they're processed, but in terms of like, I'm going to take away protein. So that's processed. You know, like it's, I'm going to probably treat them as a training supplement, which could act as a um, treat for me because they have this like chocolate mousse. It's huge, but it gives... Mm nearly i can't remember the figures above 20 grams of protein as well oh yeah it's it's sugar content is very low it is you know it's 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 a pretty good replacement snack than rather than eating a dairy milk and stuff so i'm just kind of thinking of that as a protein shake more so than that so if i'm gonna cheat with anyone <laughs> anything yeah. it is probably the one element now that we've talked do you know what let's just say yes those little protein things are going to be there because i know there's going to come a day where i'm like i haven't eaten enough i haven't taken on enough protein it's been a heavier day i want to feel like i've had something on a friday night so the protein mousse is there and and they sell them in aldi i think they're 120 Mm. and they to me personally as good as a protein shake in in terms of what it has it's they're absolutely brilliant i always say it Hey, they taste great. Like I'm, I'm a big fan of them. The, the chocolate <laughs> like, ones, more so than anything else. They taste so good. Yeah, like you now, yogurt. I'm not going out and churning my own yogurt as well. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna have yogurt. I'm gonna mm. like. There's when I say no process, I'm not going caveman. I'm not doing anything. I just mean I'm not going to buy the packet of chicken that's already southern fried. Do you know, I'm not going to buy the packet of crisps. I'm not going to buy so. 
like obviously we don't, I don't make yogurt. <laughs> I yeah. know I can, but it's, I'm not going to do it. I can't make cheese. I'm going to mm. have cheese. So it's it's the yeah. I, the more nutrient dense, that? right? Isn't it? The, the, yeah, the, but that's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking dense, at. Yeah. So you get more out of the food. It's not like good or bad yeah. food. It's like most processed, not most, but some processed food. You're not. You're getting. It's not even empty calories and stuff out of it, as opposed to if you were to make your own chicken nuggets, you'll probably get more protein and stuff out of it than you are if you're going to get a six and down McDonald's, for example. Um, yeah. And and that leads towards towards your training goals. Um. So I'm right in saying that that the calories and all is based on how you're feeling for trying to keep up your 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 thirty minutes twice a day and energy levels, as opposed to. Um, I'm only saying this because the whole diet thing and a 75 day challenge there's no restriction on calories it's more what no, keeps me going no there's no there's no restriction for me um, if anything my aim is to avoid starving myself right um, I'm going to try not snack as much though I'm going you to have try a and have, uh, no no like okay. I'm 90 oh, I'm afraid I, I, do you know what I was 94 before the weekend I'm before voted <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'll weigh myself I'll take a photo we'll do all the before and after the whole shebang but right um, do you know what I don't and we've said this before I think 88 kilo would be my lowest I want to go to I ran a little bit and I did a little bit and I was 82 kilos and I just looked unwell 6'4 and 82 kilos it just didn't suit me. I just, I didn't feel strong. I felt fast. I just didn't feel strong. Everything in you do training is, is to make you feel good. Yeah. And I think, I think I'm happy around 90 kilo. I think I'm a happy, very happy man around then. Um, so yeah, somewhere, somewhere between then, obviously with the muscle work through your training sessions, the bike, I'm going to build legs. So that will be easy to maintain that weight and, and, and a bit of size and stuff. Cause once I offload a good bit of the fat, replace it with a bit of muscle, a denser 90 kilo is a hell of a lot better than the fatter 90 kilo. So mm -hmm. um to be balanced somewhere around there between 88 and 92. And look, I know it's the podcast. You can wake up in the morning and be 92. And after a little filing of paperwork, you could be back down to your 90. So it, <laughs> you have to be, yeah, you, have, you have to be a little bit realistic as well. So there's a four kilo kind of bracket there where I want to live my life. And that's, right. we've had a couple of weeks off, oh, 92, get back going again. You're down to 88. All right, start eating more. Um, so you've seen it with me before, Sean, when I did the summer training. I was dropping kilos by the day. Yeah, and it's scary. It, it makes those it is, shouldn't happen. <laughs> no, terrifying. Mm. But I can be that disciplined with food and reduce things and stuff and get that down. But this time I want to do, yeah, yes, am I being disciplined with food? But yeah, but I, I don't want to be hungry. Like I went to bed hungry a couple of times, which is not mm. good. So, um, and that that's the aim of, of, of what we're trying to do with the food. Like, and, do you know, like it's, like bread, when we're taking the process out of it like that there's the, you're you're realistic with it you know like you're not going down the biscuit oil and picking up the biscuits you're not picking yeah. up the crisps even i'm trying to find other examples of where i'm trying to take the process out of it but unless it's in its near raw stage or it's something that's of convenience like a pasta or bread that i like eat but make the healthier whole grain choice with um that's that's what I'm trying to do. So if we end up going out for a restaurant and I get the meat and veg, well, that's similar to what I would have. The process is someone else has cooked it for me. Yeah. They might have added in some butter. No problem. That's good fats in for me. You know, like it's 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 being realistic, but picking the the better quality one as well, looking at the back and making sure there's better quality going into it. But it's being realistic. And that's that's the aim, but it's not to cut everything out and then i'm never going to want to keep that do you know yeah, i'm never going to want to live that way so yeah that's the aim and i'm going to get very creative with some of my my dinners and stuff and and start to get you know like making my own pulled pork now and you know like just getting back into that kind of thing you know um so you fit training you fit nutrition is there anything else in this or is it these two the main two for the 75 day challenge and so the water so water. I know that's part of nutrition, but it is, it's, it's fluid focused. And then the last thing that 75 day challenge adds in is, um, read 10 pages of a book every day. 
Mm. Um, so I was thinking of this one and I think it can be done every night. Um, but the bit I would, I am going to look at is reducing my social media time. So okay. if I, if I find myself on the phone for a certain period of time, then I need to say, no, we could be reading. We could be doing this. We could be doing that. So what I've said is 10 pages of a book is random like i have the mr men collection so that's easy <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, it's i my aim is i have to do something that betters me every day if that is reading the book that is reading the book if that is researching something else uh, a different nutrition thing or if i listening to the audiobook so it can be an audiobook it can be a book it can be whatever the day throws out because there can be days where you're uh, 10 days t- 10 pages is easy and maybe i should stick to that i don't know but i listen to an audiobook for a half hour every day so have i not educated myself for another half hour you know like okay so technically some people don't do that some people will listen to their music all the way in so but i'm kind of cheating because i do that anyway um yeah. so it's it's it is a different one but i tell you what i have two or three books there just for the sake of making something difficult I will read 10 pages every day. I'll match the only bit of this challenge I think is okay. I'll match. I'll read You're 10. I'll read 10 pages of a book every night. So spe- speaking of this challenge, uh, one thing that, st- that stood out when, when you talked with us last week was at some stage during this challenge, a lot of people go on TikTok and they, they get the, the camera out and they look down at the camera and they say, hey, I failed the 75 day challenge. My question to you is, accountability what what is what is the accountability for this challenge and do you have a similar process because uh, because I, I know you hate this challenge in terms of that kind of thing as well so um what happens on a fail day if there is a fail day not to set you up for failure um and what is the accountability for these 75 days that keeps you on track um for me the accountability is not a video on an instagram sure if i never posted a video on instagram you wouldn't know anyway that's so, no, I'm not saying it should be that, by the no, way. And, and just for people listening, but, we actually have to talk is, about this, so I don't know the answer. But this is where I'm realistic, and this is where my support network comes in. So right. I'm going to shake Katie's hand tonight, and I'm saying, this is it. It's game on. And I'm vir- virtually shaking your hand tonight to say, it's game on tomorrow. So I'm not just letting me down. I'm letting the contract I've made with you and Katie down. Right. And you now know, Kate now knows, I might tell my mom or you, well, she's listening, ma'am, here's the deal. Um, so now when I'm over at mom's house, right. she's like, no shit for Eric. And then when we're with Katie and I go to that press, she's going to go, oi, fat boy. Get over here. <laughs> and you know, and then if I'm at a social event with you, you know the sauce and you might go, you know, I'm not drinking tonight either. Mm-hmm. So, the idea of making a contract with other people around you for accountability, like it, everyone who does listens to the podcast can find out as well. But if the people who are around me are aware of what I'm doing and are, I have asked them actively said, try and keep me honest. They will do their very best to say, here, yeah. what are you doing? Put the chocolate down. It's like, oh no. Yeah. I didn't even notice. I just thought it was <laughs> like this, but it's, um, but that's that's the idea. Look, I get I get why people use Instagram and I get and it's just a means for accountability. I get why yeah. people do everything else. But for me, my loyalty is to people around me. And it would hurt me more to let people down than it would to just eat chocolate and post it up and go, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> I, I failed. Three Much days man, in. Man. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't care about people that I, I care about people who listen to the podcast, obviously. But as in your opinion of me, yeah. I won't lose sleep over it, really. If you get me, like as in yeah. if I eat chocolate, I haven't ruined their life. But if I eat chocolate, I can't lie to you. I can't like Katie. And then I just, yeah, you're just, I can't stick to something I said I was going to do. And and definitely Katie, she won't give me an inch. Like she she will use it against me. She'd be like, no, <laughs> you said you, you were going to do it. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's, that's, real life accountability that's realistic not everyone wants people looking through their window and that's essentially what instagram is like Mm -hmm. not everyone wants that kind of 
thing. Personally, I'm very bad at doing all the Instagram for the podcast, hence why your face is everywhere. But <laughs> I will post, I, I, I'd like to say I'm going to post every gym session. I might do, you know, them highlight reels. Hmm. Uh, I'll put them up, maybe tracking the 75 days I see, but I don't want to guarantee to that because I don't do social media a lot anyway. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not a real that's not a positive reinforcement for me, be on social media more. So, but I will, I, I'll start taking active photographs. I'll start, uh, if I think of it, I'll throw it into the stories. If I miss one of the story mornings, because I'd rather work out and figure out how to do a real, not the end of the world, but yeah, I'll, if, uh, I'll start throwing it up into the stories and maybe just give a synopsis of what I did in text of, of 40 minutes swimming this race or, you know, the RPEs, you know, perceived effort, this, this, and this. Um, so if people are interested, they can give one or two of the workouts go. But again, this is me. It, it, it does not suit everyone. It's it's probably not for everyone, but it's mm. it's 75 days of it. And the only benefit is I get fitter, I get smarter, I you know, like I learn a new, new dish or two. Um and then it's it's all positive. But the most important thing, and I know I've said it again, but it's it's realistic. It's realistic for me, seven hours a week. It's just better choices. That's where the motivation comes in. It's better choices with food. It's better preparation. It's better thinking ahead, getting the shopping done on the Sunday and planning. Don't let busy be the excuse. Be prepared to be busy. And then everything else is just routine, 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 routine. And that's the idea behind it. Um, and it can be done. It can be done. And it'd be interesting to see. It'd be like I even, uh, yeah, no, I just, you feel it when I'm sitting on the plane on the way back, you just feel the belly over the belt. You're like, oh man, <laughs> I need to go training. This, this and would I, have sounded about a time for you. Yeah, I'm well, look, half of me knew that as well. So I was like, right, have at it, world. This is it. But it's, um, but yeah, I, I think I've covered all that. I know it's a real, I don't know, random episode. It's just me telling mm. you the plan. But um, I, I don't know what people can take from it. I don't, I don't know, like, are people just think I'm nuts or, you know, but mm. if there's anything to take of, it's, it's, it's just, set a goal for you be realistic about it like even we only touched on it but the four days like that's four days i can go drinking with the lads do you know mm. but it doesn't have to be every weekend do you know like I, I have to be like i can't go out every weekend that's just stupidity if i'm doing all this work and going drinking every weekend so there's yeah. the realism is there's no stupidity in it but there's events coming up like i said i've six of them four of them so i have to make choices so it's not easy the easy option is just say, oh, well, all them events are fine. It's not. I have to make a choice now for two. And it, as my confidence builds and we start seeing progress, I might say, well, look, I don't care about the others. Mm. I'll pick one of it, you know, and 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 that's the reality. Now, and this is over a 75-day period. If you were talking about over a whole year, you could say, well, look, I've won a month. There's 12, 12 events in a year. That's a lot. Yeah, That's 1,200 euros if you drink 100 quid a night. So when you looking at that, right? That's that's sounds like an awful waste of money when you put it that way. And that's why I go to Poland for Paddy's Day. Yeah, Jesus, <laughs> I want a Euro for twelve. My God, that's two Would days you, of hangovers and feeling like absolute crap. <laughs> yeah, and look, and, and, and I'll do it again, do it. <laughs> and we will, and we will do it again, and after yeah. the marathon, we'll do it again. Um, but it it's just about the reality. It's about getting value out of me. It's about and and that's the idea. It's it's I'm the investment for the next seventy five days. And and if you're listening to this and you're feeling a little bit, you know, like you've let yourself down for a little while, just start thinking. Well, look, how do I start investing in myself better? It might be doing training two times a day. That might be your thing. But read ten pages. Maybe make your own chicken nuggets. Learn about different foods that work well with your body and stuff. You know. So, um, there's a lot that people can do. The seventy five day challenge is just a gimmick infringement, really. Yeah. Um, because I don't agree with it, but it's it's a realistic goal. It's a challenge. I haven't. You're doing all the challenges. Let's be honest. I have to do something to talk about <laughs> on the podcast. But um, but it is something. It, it's something that's not easy. It does sound now that I've made it sound easy. It isn't. It, it's no. not easy. Um, but that's where the challenge comes in. And um, but it's realistic. It's 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 a hard seventy five day challenge. But it's realistic that you can kind of go, you're not that tired. Mm. Do you know, you're not feeling that sorry for yourself. Just get out and do it, you know. So, um, but that's it, yeah. And, and look, it'll be an interesting journey. I'll, I'll definitely learn it. I, I like my cooking. I cook a wide range of food. But 
I'm going to have to learn a hell of a lot more dishes as well now and taste other foods. And it's, it's going to be a fun experience in that way. And that's how I find it fun. There's no mm -hmm. calorie restriction. It's how can I get the most food into my body without it being wasted calories? Do you know, and that's, that's the idea. That's the idea behind it, you know? So mm -hmm. your chicken nuggets versus my own ones, I could probably eat 30 of them compared to your 10 <laughs> of McDonald's, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's good. It sounds like a great consistency challenge, Eric. Uh, best of luck with it. I'm sure you will keep us updated with that on the podcast, more so than social media. I'm totally honest with you. <laughs> 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 and on that note, unless you've got anything else to add to the challenge last second, we'll wrap up this episode of the podcast. No, I'm, I'm glad I, we started talking about the Cork Martin. We get the most messages over this Cork Martin. Oh, even someone else text in. I've just been in Cork. It's hilly. <laughs> I, I'm still in shock that that, that Cork Marathon is not hilly, by the way. I'm actually blown away that, it's, that, that you're in for a flat. I'm disappointed, actually, is probably the right word that it's a flat course. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I did my research. I'm not fool. I knew what I was getting into. But, um... it, uh, <laughs> but thanks to everyone who does message. Uh, we do appreciate yeah. it. Um, I was obviously away for the weekend so I didn't get back to anyone a message over the weekend but I do appreciate it, uh, letting us know that I could be in for trouble but um, yeah thanks for having reached out it's caused a bit of a stir but yeah we'll, we'll keep in touch and see how we go uh, on that note guys thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Energy Monday Podcast that's myself and Eric take care bye bye